Feeling that great sudden craving for something sweet that you must have or die. I wonder what that is. Psychologists, I suppose, would say it's a way of seeking comfort, of easing an unknown anxiety, a substitute for deeper hunger. Myself, I just like the taste. Mmm. Makes me feel calm, relaxed, at ease with the world. There are those, of course, who have a craving for something that cannot be so easily satisfied, something that is not readily available in the nearest refrigerator, or they believe anywhere at all, something they've always wanted but have never had, like um, money, for example, or love, or both. And when these longings are not easily sated, they tend to grow into obsessions and become severely damaging to your health. just as eating too much ice cream can. <coughs> Knowing when to stop. <coughs> That's the most important thing, because if you don't, as the heroine in this story discovers, your craving can lead you to want more than is good for you. Who needs a moon to make one swoon when I've got your eyes who needs the stars to guide one's path? When I've got your eyes, I don't need a drink to think. We're on the brink of a romantic link. When I've got your eyes, don't need the lights to set my sights. When I've got your eyes, I cannot speak. My knees go weak when I've got your eyes From your gaze I'll never shrink A nod ain't as good as a wink When I've got your eyes When I've got your eyes Don't even seem to recognize my own self It's so much a surprise Seeing me through you makes me fantasize that you see with your own eyes something in me Perhaps I should say, senorita. You wouldn't by any chance be my salvation, would you? Sorry. Well, I'm on my last leg, so like it or not, you'll have me resting here anyway. Well, you see... I am here, you know, to do my, my little act in the show in town. One of those last-minute engagements. 
little mix-up about the bookies. You know, they've got something for tomorrow night, but tonight, nothing but the beach to lay the old bones on and sand us. Terrible things to the vocal cords. And that's not the worst of it, if I bury more than my head and stuff. If you know what I mean, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh... Oh, uh, Amory. Mrs. Amory. Oh, so you're my last resort, Mrs. Amory. So, uh, had I known you could tinkle out a tune with the best of them, you'd have been on top of my list. And who's not to say, accompanying an old crooner like me one day? Eh? Oh, but I'm so out of practice. No, I'm sure we could put that right, given a chance, eh? Well, uh, the problem is that, strictly speaking, uh, Mr... Oh, Castle. Stephen Castle. Heartthrob to the short-sighted, serenader of the hard of hearing. <laughs> well, well, you see, the thing is, M Mr. Castle, uh, strictly speaking, we're closed. Oh, closed? In the middle of summer? Funny sort of holiday hotel you have here, Mrs. Amory. Oh, well, my husband has a bad back, you see, since his army days. Well, bad back, does he? Oh, the poor man. Yes, it's gone again. Only worse than ever. He's away now with a specialist at the city hospital. And he doesn't like me trying to cope on my own, so he decided it would be better if we closed for a while. So I'd better get myself a bucket in Spain. I'm sorry. I, if it was up to me, but... Well, you know, he, he gets a bit tetchy when his back is playing up. Do you know that's understandable? That is quite understandable, Mrs. Amory. I put a sound back next to a pure heart when it comes to getting through life, and quite often you get through better when you just have a sound back. Now, mine, mine's as sound as a bell, Mrs. Amory. Just in case there's anything you need to do. I mean, I see there's some wine there that needs putting away. Lawrence likes to think he's a bit of a connoisseur. The state he's in, I can't see him putting away that lot. Well, between you and me, Mrs. Amory, I have a bit of a talent for putting away wine. Perhaps you'd like a cup of tea. My husband will be home soon, and then we could ask him about your staying. You're on there, Mrs. Avery. You're on. Are you sure you won't be wanting your tea in the lounge, Mr. Castle? Oh, Stephen, please. <laughs> Stephen. No, no, I'm doing very nicely here, thank you. Uh, can I call you? Oh, Olivia. Olivia. That's very nice. Touch of the exotic, eh? Olivia. You had the place long, Olivia? Just about two years. See, Lawrence was in insurance in London after the army, and, well, I, I think he felt he needed a bit of a new challenge. Trouble is, he's one of those people who likes to do everything himself, even when he's not quite up to it. Yeah, it's difficult. Sometimes realizing one's limitations. Also, one's potential, Olivia. Do you mind if I am? Oh, no. It's, it's not as though we need the money. I mean, uh, there's Lawrence's pension. And uh, his mother left him quite a nice little nest egg. And we got quite a good price for our house in London. And there aren't any children for us to worry about. Excuse me. Well, that's a freeze and a half you got there. Slice of ice cream dessert, Stephen. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm doing just grand, thank you. Well, it's my secret vice, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it must be very exciting in show business. Well, sometimes I think I should settle down, lead a normal family life, but uh, there's nothing like the excitement of performing for a live audience. Those stairs could 
take the twinkle out of Phyllis Day's tootsies. Oh, I should never agree to you carrying that. And here we are. And here we are. Where are you? Coming! Are you all right, Lawrence? Oh. Yeah. Here, come and sit down. <coughs> what did the specialist say, then? Oh, <laughs> specialist. Travel miles and wait for hours in agony to see him. And then what does he say? Stay in bed and see how it goes. Stay in bed and see how it goes. Oh. Hello there. Who's that? That's Mr. Castle, Lawrence. He's an entertainer. He's come to perform in the theatre. Oh, what's he doing here? Mr. Emmy, I just popped by on the off chance that you uh, might have a room. But we're closed. D didn't you? Oh, didn't you tell him? Mr. Castle has tried everywhere else, but they were full. <gasps> the uh, the theatre made a bit of a muddle, I'm afraid. Mr. Castle has been so good as to help me put some of your wine in the cellar, Lawrence. Oh, you've got him working for you already, have you? She's frightfully good at getting other people to work for her. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be no bother, Mr. Amory. All I need's a bed. That makes two of us. Let me help you, Lawrence. Mm. Mr. Castle said those cellar steps are lethal. I told you they needed seeing to. There's nothing wrong with those steps, providing you're sober. You hadn't been drinking, Lawrence. Mm. And you gave him tea. At least, he's got some charm. Entertainers are paid to have charm. Well, I wasn't paying him anything, was I? Wouldn't surprise me if a few landladies have paid quite dearly for Mr. Castle's charms. I saw that medal the other day in a sale, going quite cheaply, should have bought it. Olivia. Now don't you worry yourself. You sit yourself down, I'll get you some breakfast. Oh, I should be doing this. I shouldn't be letting you see me like this in my dressing gown. I don't think you'd want me to be seeing you without your dressing gown, would you, Olivia? Hmm? You just sit yourself down. Get this down here. seem very handy in a kitchen. Well, bachelors have to be handy in all sorts of places, Olivia. You're twisting my words again, Stephen. Now, what else would you want me to be twisting of a married lady, Mrs. Emery? Stephen. I'm surprised someone hasn't cut your tongue out before now. Do you know, I think my old mum was not the point of it until she found out I could earn a bit of money using it. I used to love coming to see me perform, my mum did. Hope you'll come and see me in a show, Olivia. Oh, I'd love to. Although with Lawrence sick, I'm afraid it'll have to be a matinee. Oh, that's all right. I always kill her in the afternoon. Like a matador. Papa was a boy scout. Mama was a girl guide. Through fields so damp, I would tramp to their campfire side. With some string, they would begin teaching what they knew. There's no doubting all their scouting 
soon I did learn to Since the cut, there's not a knot that I could not undo How did I get roped into being tied to you? Since I was teeny, I've been a Houdini I do not find it such a bind when bound to wet For one so fond of breaking bonds stays free in bed Into a brief merger I may urge her till we part Why stay in a rut and bust your gut when for a start You get your wife out of your life just breaking her heart How did I get roped into How did I get roped into being tied, being tied to you? Get it clear, I'm the one steer. They can't How did I get roped into being tied, being tied to you? Coming! There was no hoping you can be you are the champion, I was just coming up, Lawrence. I've only just come in. There was no need for you to get out of bed, dear. I was just coming up. After you guzzled your way through a block of ice cream, so oh, I just had a taste, Lawrence. Only a taste. Oh, it was a lovely show, Lawrence. He's very good, Mr. Castle. You did say you'd be all right, dear. I wouldn't have gone if you hadn't said you'd be all right. I was all right. Just heard you coming in, that's all. <sighs> I went backstage, you know, Lawrence. Stephen gave me a tape of his singing. A one he made himself, not one that you can get in the shops. I said I might show him a bit of the town tomorrow. Perhaps go for a ride, for a drive. You don't think I could borrow the car, Lawrence? Oh. I promise I'll drive carefully. There's no need for you to worry. Why should I worry? With you driving, Mr. Carthel should be worried. <laughs> Sir. Off the brown. With two reds left. Popular. Not as popular as you. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Thank you. so beautiful. I think I better get out. Don't 
Even my wife. Steve! Yeah, that's sweet, pretty pet. She said I'd get I got. Now I know. I'm not. Oh, this is for you, darling. No, she kind of tips the Got no crystal ball. Olivia? Oh, there you are. Don't you hear me call? Lawrence, what are you doing out of bed? It's the middle of the night. I wanted a hot drink. Come on. I couldn't sleep. Let's get you back upstairs, and I'll bring you one in a minute. I didn't know what to hold on to. Luckily, I'll pump for my tongue. <laughs> here we are, Lawrence. Drink this. It'll help you sleep. He was here, wasn't he? What are you talking about? Your singer. I heard him singing. It was a tape, Lawrence. I heard him laughing. He doesn't laugh at the singing on the tape, does he? That's a privilege enjoyed by the rest of us. <laughs> you don't know anything about laughter, Lawrence. Not real laughter. Not the sort that makes you feel good. And you don't know anything about me. What precisely don't I know about you? After eight years of being married to you. Well, for a start, I love him, Lawrence. I love Stephen. What? What, that smarmy little... Stop it! I love him. Worried. I thought you might not be coming back. I waited to see him again after his performance. And? We, uh, we have decided not to see each other for a while. Not even to phone each other. I mean, he finishes here at the end of next week anyway. If then, by the end of next month, we still feel the same way about each other, we'll... we'll try and live together. Ah. Huh. And, uh, if not?
words. I am not a dog. Why don't you give us a tune on the piano, Olivia? Hmm? I'd love to hear you play again. You never liked my playing, Lawrence. Oh, that's not true, darling. That's not true. I promise. I'd love to hear you play. He would have left town by now. He would have finished his last show by now. <laughs> I don't know where he is. He told me he would ring when the time was up. He hasn't got any money, you know. <laughs> I mean, he can't have much money if he's taking engagements like this, can he? Hmm? Olivia? You don't need the lights to set my sights When I've got your eyes I cannot speak My knees go weak When I've got your eyes From your gaze I'll never shrink a nod ain't as good as a wink When I've got your eyes Olivia Darling go. We can't go on like this You must try and snap out of it, darling Do you know, I think perhaps you should Talk to the doctor No, I don't want to talk to the doctor Well, I'll talk to him All right I'll snap out of it. I mean, if that's what you want, I'll snap out of it. And for a start, this place is up to the peace time. If we're ever going to open again, we must get this place cleaned up. What are you doing now? Put that wine down. You'll hurt yourself. Well, you won't be able to put it in the cellar, will you, Lawrence? Not with your bag. Come. Come on, give it to you. Just put the light on, will you? Olivia, put that light on, will you?
you so much, Stephen. Aren't you pleased with me? Aren't you pleased with your clever little girl? And you didn't suspect anything? No. Huh? I did everything just like you told me to. Of course, they asked questions, lots of questions, but they found nothing. And no sign of the wire? No. I put padding on it so it wouldn't cut into the wood, just like you told me to. Anyway, I don't think it was the wire that killed him. I mean, after all, you said yourself, those steps are very dangerous, Stephen. Don't you remember? I nearly lost you just as soon as I'd found you. Do you think you'd feel better, Olivia, if it had been an accident? No. 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 Oh, Stephen. When it happened, I didn't even feel depressed. I didn't even feel shocked. I, I, I felt... I felt you there. No, oh. I, I wasn't there, Olivia. I was far away, far away on stage. I wasn't killing anyone, Olivia. I was bringing an audience to life. No, no. <laughs> no, but what I mean is, Stephen, that when we stopped seeing each other, I didn't have to pretend to be depressed. I really did go off my food, and, and I couldn't sleep. It was as though I was never going to see you again. And I really think that Lawrence thought I was going to hurt myself, because, because you see, Stephen, in a way I was. A part of me really wanted to hurt myself. And then when your plan began to fit into place, it was as though every move was bringing you back to me. It was as though my moves were your moves, and each move was bringing us closer and closer together. Until finally, when I looked down and I saw Lawrence lying there, it wasn't as though Lawrence had actually gone, but it was as though... Stephen, it was as though you were there. I wasn't there, Olivia. Do you understand? I was not close to you. I met you once when I stayed a night at your hotel, and I bumped into you a couple of times afterwards, but I was never close to you. I'm not going to get close to you until after tomorrow night, when you see by chance that I'm performing in another show and you come backstage. And ask in front of witnesses, so I remember you. And I say, of course I do. And how about a drink? And by the way, how is Mr. Amy? And you answer sobbing that he's so, by the way, that he's out of it completely. And I offer you my shoulder to sob your widow's tears on. And you grow so fond of the shoulder, you take it back to your little hotel. And everyone sees that I've got in there like a shot. But my shot's been fired after the body's gone cold. So everybody's so busy accusing us of bad taste that they don't think to accuse us of very fine thinking. Just when the gossip's beginning to go off the boil, you get married. <gasps> oh, you know, you look so lovely in your widow's weeds. It's almost a shame to take them off, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Take me to Spain, Mrs. a social game. No, you know, poker is not a game unless you play it for money. <laughs> well, I don't think that lot would find it very social if I played them in matchsticks. I'm not made of money, Stephen. Besides, I don't have that sort of cash. No, you're not trying to tell me that Lawrence kept all the earnings from the hotel in the bank, eh? All those lovely readies and safekeeping for the tax inspector. Of course he did. You don't think I'd hide anything from you, do you? Do you think this would look nice in here, darling? I don't think anything would look nice in here, Olivia. What do you mean, Stephen? The sooner we sell this place, the better. Why? Oh, I want to do things with it. I've got it all planned out. I'm a singer, Olivia, not a glorified waiter. Oh, yes. Engagements you've got this year, I could do better myself. Are you? You haven't got the musical ability to make a pianola play the right notes. Well, the 
you're spending my money, Stephen. You'll soon be a waiter. Or if I do or not. They better get in some practice. Another slice, please, waiter. One is never enough. Stephen, I was only joking. Darling! I was teasing. It's incredible that papers and forms they still send me about Lawrence's pensions, insurance, shares, and God knows what. Do you think he minded dying, Lawrence? I don't think he died at once, do you, Stephen? I think he must have known something, you know? Even if it wasn't for very long. Perhaps he was as glad about leaving me as I was about his going. Perhaps he was grateful to me. If he knew. I think he probably knew. Lawrence usually got there in the end. For God's sake, shut up about it. You go on and on about it. Just shut up and forget about it. Well, it's not something you can forget very easily. It's not as though I've murdered anyone before, Stephen. Oh. You think I have? How am I meant to know what you got up to before you met me? I was a singer. I went around singing, didn't I? Not killing people. What's this? It's one of Lawrence's pipes. What the bloody hell is it doing in this chair? Well, it was Lawrence's chair, wasn't it? I'm sorry, too. Oh, it's so silly us fighting like this, Stephen. Yes. Especially when we love each other so much. Yeah. Let's go for a drive tomorrow, eh? Well, I had planned to see about those new curtains for downstairs. Oh, well, that can wait for a day. Let's go for a little trip. We haven't been anywhere in ages. Let's go to our place. Olivia, I wasn't trying to kill you, for God's sake. If I was trying to kill you, I'd have pushed you over, wouldn't I? It's not your way, is it, Stephen? What do you mean? Well, it's what you told me about Lawrence. What are you talking about? If you want to kill someone, it's best to get them to do it for you. Taste it first. No, you don't think you. 
You don't think I've poisoned it, eh? You taste it first. Why don't you come to bed? I'm sleeping in here tonight. Oh, come on, Olivia. No bones? And I'll even taste it for you. That's how they're going to kill you, is it? No, 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 no. Come on. <coughs> come on, sit this. next week. Yeah, let's really make a night of it. Anyway. <laughs> La 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 Oh, you look gorgeous. <laughs> this is an ice cream cake, but it is a very special ice cream cake. Oh, what's the flavor? What's no, the no, flavor? no, 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 I'm not telling you. It's a very special ice cream cake because it contains perhaps a touch more ice than normal. No, 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 I'm not having you eating it all before our meal, so... I'm going to hide it somewhere in the uh, freezer. <clears throat> and to keep your mind off it, there's this. I made a new tape. Oh, Stephen. Oh, what a lovely present. <laughs> Stephen. Oh, you're so good to me, Stephen. Oh, and I love you so much. 
And I just love the way you sing, Steve. I love the way you sing. And I love those wonderful little silly nothing presents you give me. Daft cow. <laughs> oh, well, Lydia, I can hardly wait for it, girl. We'll have a wonderful dinner and then we'll all go out together and we'll celebrate those lovely presents, Steve. And oh, it's wonderful. Got my glasses on, Steve. Yeah. Let me out! Thank <laughs> you. 
much of a good thing can very quickly become a bad thing. On the other hand, Olivia will certainly never again be troubled by a craving for ice cream. A craving I know well. Just one more. No, I won't give in. Moderation in all things or else you could live to regret it. Was that a scream? You must be hearing things. When I've got your eyes Who needs the stars to guide one's path? When I've got your eyes I don't need a drink to think We're on the brink of a romantic link When I've got your eyes Don't need the lights To set my sight when I've got your eyes, I cannot speak, my knees go weak. When I've got your eyes, from your gaze I'll never shrink. A nod ain't as good as a wink. When I've got your eyes, 